What's going on YouTube? Today we're doing Biblioteca. So Biblioteca is a machine that has been released in TryHackMe. We're going to do this machine today. And I know it has been long since we actually tackled down one of these machines either in Hack the Box or in TryHackMe. But in today's video we're going, we're going to do that on this machine. It's medium difficulty. And let's give you an uh, introduction into the steps that we will take before we actually implement them. So let's talk about the first step that we will take in this video. So the first thing that we will do all the time is information gathering and scanning. Here we gather information about the host, about the environment, see what are the open ports. So actually we draw a map or an image on the open ports and the surfaces. So in today's machine or today's uh, virtual machine, we will find by doing nmap scan, we will find that we have two open ports. We have 22 and we have 8,000. Okay, now for 22, it's very obvious that it's running SSH, right? And for 8,000, we will see that it is running the web server. Okay, so by conducting an nmap scan, we find two open ports, one for SSH and the other one for HTTP. Now the next step, after the information gathering and after the scanning is the enumeration. So we step from information gathering to enumeration. Now in here, since we have, we don't have uh, other ports open and we don't have credentials set to try them against SSH. And since password brute force is the least preferred method all the time, we start immediately with the web enumeration. Okay. So web enumeration includes multiple steps, among which is actually visiting the page on port 8000, understanding the site structure, understanding the uh, page source, see what are the what might be the hidden inf information in the page source. Uh, but after uh, going through all of that, we can start something called directory search or directory brute force. So we run GoBuster. GoBuster is a tool that is used to perform directory search to find hidden files and directories on the website now we end up with a couple directories such as for example we discovered that we have slash login page we discovered that we have slash register okay and we discovered that we have also another page slash logout okay now, after we have discovered the important pages, we proceed to the login page. Now, it's always recommended that when we encounter a login form, we have to take two paths, one of two paths. The first one is we do password brute force. So a login form has use field for username and field for password, right? Now, one of the methods to get in is to perform password brute force. You can perform password brute force using multiple tools, such as, um, let me mention some of the tools that they have discussed previously. For example, we can do that using OWASP, ZAP, the prominent vulnerability scanner. You can also do that with the tool called Hydra, which is a specialized tool in cracking or finding the username and passwords in login forms. But since in all the engagements we prefer we go we, we don't prefer to go the brute force path, that's why we will take the another the other path. The other path that's the first path. The other path obviously would be to actually perform vulnerability scan on the web server. Why do we do the vulnerability scan? We want to find out if the form is actually vulnerable to SQL injection. So the other path is SQL injection. So SQL injection as in was a vulnerability that affects databases, which enable the attacker to dump the full records, including the username and passwords, maybe also hashes. So we want to do vulnerability scan to find out if the server or the web server can be vulnerable to SQL injection. But if you don't have access to vulnerability scans during an engagement, you might need to do that manually. So we can supply 
um, one of the SQL injection payloads we have talked about earlier and we will find out that we will be that we can log in as an admin if you provide a simple payload such as um, say or code or one equal one and at the end we have this to comment out the rest of the query and we close the single code so once we find out that the site is vulnerable to SQL injection we decide to dump the full records of the database that's the objective right of SQL injection we want to dump the full records of the database so we run something called the SQL map SQL map we discussed in many uh, videos and many times before so SQL map is a tool that we can use to perform SQL injection uh, testing and also exploitation so using SQL map we will be able to dump the records in the database including we will find username in the form of email okay and we will find password all right now and that's how we step to SQL injection right that's how we, we do that next we actually when once we fight credentials we remember that we have SSH server running right so what we do here we take the credentials and we log into the SSH server so here you can draw a, a row but it's gonna be very long so I'm gonna just log in to the SSH server and that's how we achieve the first foothold on the machine so it's, it's simply say we go we go we go went through typical steps that we uh, would actually go through during an engagement scanning enumeration vulnerability scanning exploitation and then the first foothold okay so once we uh, log in all right we will we can actually start enumerating the machine we are we, we are now at the step of the privileged escalation so we are here so we start enumerating the machine we see what are the current users get access to for example we have a user called hazel and another user is the root user our objective is to get to the root user okay now in privilege escalation we have two types we have the horizontal okay and we have the vertical now during an engagement we might need to do the horizontal if we discover that we have other users uh, or users that are different than the user which we have get access with so in here the user is different than hazel so we prefer first to see what hazel has to do for us so we try to escalate to hazel uh, surprisingly we can do that using password reuse so the password for user hazel is the same as the username so this is called the password reuse and it's very common to see password reuse uh, on an individual level and on corporate levels many users many people use the same password as the username or the same password for all accounts so it's a serious thing to pay attention to and once we get access to hazel it's time now to escalate to root we will actually escalate uh, using one of the most prominent privileged escalation methods which is a python library hijacking we will talk about that once we get to that step okay so enough now theory let's now step to the practical scenario first step is scanning sudo nmap dash sv we scan all the services and the versions dash a aggressive scanning and then we plug in the IP address of the virtual machine and we hit enter now to avoid wasting time we're gonna open a new tab okay and in here we're gonna perform the web enumeration to find out the hidden directories so basically we can do that using the GoBuster tool now if you don't have GoBuster simply we can type sudo apt install GoBuster right but in recent versions in backbox it comes pre-installed now sudo or without sudo this time it doesn't require elevated privileges so we run gobuster as the current user dir to indicate that we are enumerating directories dash uh, url so u 
So the URL will be the URL of the virtual machine along with the ports on which the web server is open. So HTTP, the IP, and then 8000. 8000 is the port on which the uh, uh, web server is running. Dash W, we define the word list that we are going to use in order to enumerate the directories. So let's uh, define, let's see here. So the NL scan is finished. Okay, so now cd desktop, cd tools. Okay, I'm going to use the sec lists. So let me copy the directory here and go to, okay. So slash sec lists. Let's see what we have under this directory. So we're gonna go with discovery since we are actually uh, figuring out what are the directories there. So the classification is discovery. And then what do we have under this directory? Let's see what are the available word lists. Okay, uh, according to the directory structure, we're gonna go with web content, web content, and then see what are the word lists that we have. Yes, okay. Let's see here. So this, these are the word lists that we can use to enumerate the directory structure. More, uh, uh, pressing one space will give you more word lists. So let's see here. So we have many word lists, guys. I'm gonna go with the popular one, directory list medium, okay? Take this one, copy that, and then paste this here. So once we do that, we are ready to kick off the command. And we have an issue, say here, obviously we're using the old GoBuster here. So we're gonna remove the DIR from the command and run this again. Okay, so as you can see, we are now enumerating the web server and we have already discovered a couple directories such as the login and we have register. Of course, we judge that by looking at the status code which is 200, indicating that the page is responding and exists, it does exist. So now we're going to go to the web browser and take a look at this page, slash login. Software updater, yeah, we don't want to update now, thank you very much. Open that and then we proceed to Let's end the command, no need for carrying on. And I'm gonna copy the URL. No, this is the error. We need to go up, make sure we copy that, and then here, slash login. So this is the login screen. So as I demonstrated at the very first of the video, guys, that brute force is the least preferred method. Uh, and we use brute force when we actually go out of options. Okay. Now, as also I demonstrated, guys, that we can run vulnerability scan using OWASP, ZAB, or any other tool to confirm our uh, suspicion that we can use SQL injection on this form. So to save time, we can just run a simple payload which is considered also as some form of scanning, right? You try a couple of SQL payloads to see if the um, form responds with errors or responds with uh, uh, something that you would actually expect from a vulnerable uh, target. So now let's type code or one equal one. Let's see. So this one didn't work. Let's try again with code or one equal one and this time with a space and single code and this one worked as you can see i'm logged in yeah this doesn't seem like a real login page but most importantly is the process so we're logged in as a user called smoky and um, as you can see we have a button to log out and that's it most importantly we are logged in with this payload which means that the target is vulnerable to sql injection and the next step, when we have a target vulnerable to SQL injection, it's time now to perform 
full exploitation, right? So after we know it's vulnerable without the use of any vulnerability scanner, we don't need to waste our time, right? If we can just um, test it out using a couple payloads and it, it, it figured, uh, it, it turns out that it, it's vulnerable, we can proceed with no need to, to use vulnerability scanners. More, most importantly in any engagement is the time. So we minimize this scrolling down and now we start with sql map so if we type sql map so it says we're gonna need to update sql map we haven't updated sql map for more than 749 days okay no problem let's try to run sql map now without the update if uh, something happened we will update this so sql map dash u and then the url so the URL is, let's go to copy the URL, points to the login page, okay? And then we need to supply the data for SQL map to test, as we have demonstrated before. So dash dash data, and here we supply the data. Alternatively, we can capture the request with perp suite, as we have also demonstrated earlier, previously, in previous videos. And you can supply the request to SQL map. But if you don't want, you can just use a dash dash data switch and supply the uh, data. So basically, code, username, you can supply as your name. You can say um, test. Okay. And then and we need to look for the and simple. Yeah. And, and the password, you can supply it as also test. And we close the. Uh, single code okay next we type dash dash or use the switch uh, wait I remove the single codes dash dash dump indicating that we will actually dump the contents of the database or we're willing to, to dump the contents of the database and dash dash dbs looks like the end the back end dbms is my sql do you want to skip test payload specific for other dbms's so say yes um, and here we have for the remaining test do you want to include all the tests for my sql extending provided level one and okay so if you don't want to get asked these questions guys you can just uh, control c and type dash dash patch to auto detect And as you can see, we have finished. If we scroll up, okay, so here we go. As you can see, the parameter variable to SQL injection is the username. And we have demonstrated this when we plugged in the payload or the SQL payload in the username uh, field, if you remember. And here's the type of SQL variable. It's time, paste, blind. And then we have, as you can see, the query, sleep, also, Another uh, type of uh, SQL injection vulnerability exists, which is the union for the union query. And if it's called, I will see details about the backend DBMS, which is MySQL, and here's the version. And here are the databases. We have information schema, we have website. If we scroll down, it's perform it was performing here the um, extraction process of the information. And if we scroll down, we see the username and the password. So we have username Smokey, and we have the password. Now, armed with this information, we can now start looking at the Nmap scan results. Let's see, where are the Nmap scan results? Hopefully, I kept them somewhere. Okay, so now we have the Nmap scan, and if you remember, we have uh, port 22 open with the SSH. So now we can try to log in to the SSH server to establish our first foothold. So there is a name Smokey, and this is the password. We copy the password. SSH small key at and now we're gonna need to um, yeah so the, op the IP address here 
of the virtual machine, enter, and now we copy the password back of the clipboard. Yes, paste. And now we are logged in. So that is your first foothold. And you have successfully compromised the machine. So still yet, you haven't finished your job. You need to continue and carry on to prevalent escalation. So the first thing we do all the time is we cat etc passwords to see the user. So we have Hazel, right? And we know what kind of users that we have on the system by looking at the shell path. So the shell path here is slash home slash Hazel and the shell is enabled, which means we can log in as Hazel. For example, MySQL, uh, the shell, it doesn't have shell, so we cannot log in as MySQL. So we have Hazel, we have Smokey, and of course we have Ruth. If we type ID to see who we are, we are Smokey. It's clear now. And again, you can type also who am I, and you are Smokey. So the next target is Hazel. Now, as I demonstrated uh, at the very first of the video, is that for this scenario, the way to get to user Hazel is to actually um, exploit the fact that the password is the same as username. And it happens a lot, right? So we try to escalate to Hazel using the following command, su. So we change the user Hazel, su Hazel. Here it will ask for the password. We type the password the, the same as the username, Hazel. And now simply we actually are Hazel. ID and you are Hazel. Okay. The next step now would be to escalate to root. Hazel can run commands as sudo or in elevated mode. So to inspect that, we can run sudo dash L. So sudo dash L displays the commands that Hazel can run as sudo, right? As you can see here, Hazel can run set environment, which is used to set environment variables in Linux without the need to supply passwords. As what? As root. And this is what he can run, or what they can run uh, using the set environment variable. So let's go ahead now and inspect the contents of this Python uh, script. So cat home hazel hasher py. And these are the contents of the uh, Python script. Seems like hey, hasher py is kind of Python script that hashes the string you give it as an input, as you can see. So we provide an input and it gives us the MD5 hash, SHA256, and SHA1, and so on and so forth. So it's password hasher. That's it. But what we can do with this Python script? So what we need to actually figure out in order to use a Python script and escalate to root since it is needed that we use the Python script in the command if we want to run an elevated commands as root. So we discovered that there's a library here, cachelib, and there is no mention of the full path of this library. So one of the methods uh, to conduct Linux privilege escalation, guys, is environment when you, when you exploit the fact that environment variables are not set correctly. Um, the, there is no absolute path that points to the uh, Python library. So there is no absolute path to points which Python library, right? Or which hash lib to use in this script. So we can create our own hash lib uh, library file Python. We insert our own code. Okay. And then since we have the ability to run set environment variable as sudo or an elevated mode, we can actually tell the Python script here, hasher py, to run our own version of hashlib, which exists or will be exists will will be existed in the path that we select. So, if you don't know about uh, so if we don't know about uh, so if we don't know about this technique of privilege escalation, we can research it more and you can find out more information about environment or environment variable path exploitation. So let's go let's scroll down now and let's go to a directory such as temp. Okay, and here we're gonna create a file called or a file name that matches the name of hashlib. Okay. And then we can use whatever content we would like to use inside this file. 
So nano hash lib pi. Okay. This file will be used by the Python script instead of the original library. So if I want my code to be executed, I will put it here. The kind of code that I want to be executed is the code that will elevate the current user to um, uh, root. Let's look for Python reverse shell. Let's see here among this stack, what do we have? Okay, this one is UDB. Maybe I need something TCP. So import socket, reverse shift to connect back to attacker box to. So we have one of these. Let's take the shorter one. Give me things. So, of course, we need to again change in the information. So here, 4555. Okay, and then we paste in the IP address. And this is my IP address here. Save. Let's see if it will work with this. Looking here, and as you can see, we received the connection when we run this command. If we examine the user that we have received, ID and you are the root. So we have achieved the objective of this uh, engagement.